So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a free drawing from your sketchbook and convert it into a uh, more highly realized sketch uh, for concept art or uh, something that uh, you might want to show to a client. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is open up Photoshop and I'm going to be going into a folder that already have selected here. It's uh, called Cloud Design for Scans and there are a bunch of pages that I scanned from one of my sketchbooks. Uh, we're going to select this one here. It's called uh, CA08. CA is for concept art. And what we have here is a very uh, simple drawing of a character and what I'm going to be doing is showing you in a, a few short steps how you can take this sketch and convert it to something that uh, you might want to show to a client if you're working on a, uh, a game design or uh, an animation concept or a book concept or whatever. Anyway, so we have our uh, drawing open. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit and you can see we have here without further. You can see it's a very rough uh, sketch. It's not even, it hasn't even been cleaned up yet and we're going to leave it in this state because we're not really concerned with having a highly polished finished piece of art. What, um, what we want here is just to show something very uh, spontaneous and uh, well designed. Anyway, so here we have our black and white pencil sketch and the first thing I'm going to do is convert it to a uh, more brownish color. The end effect that we're trying to achieve here is to have uh, sort of like a sanguine chalk drawing on charcoal paper, the kind of thing that you might have done in um, uh, figure drawing when you were a student uh, or when you were an earlier student. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer. And I always duplicate the background layer because I, I, I like to have the original art um, still uh, within the file in case I ever need to go back to it. Um, usually uh, you don't, but I mean, uh, I, just for safety's sake, I like to have it. Anyway, um, so we have the background copy uh, here in our layers file. So I'm going to go into image and I'm going to go to adjust and the first thing I'm going to do is go into color balance. All right, so we have a dialog box here and it has uh, three sliders going from uh, cyan to red, yellow to green, yellow to blue, and we also have down here on the bottom shadows, uh, mid-tones, and highlights. Uh, mid-tones are the default uh, that Photoshop has for this. Um, and we have the preserve luminosity uh, box checked. So we're going to leave that checked. And, and what we're going to do is we're also going to ignore highlights because uh, you're going to see in a few minutes that what tends to happen is when we start playing with these sliders, it's going to change the color of the uh, gray lines. So uh, I don't want to change the color of the white, the higher, the highlights. So what I really just want to be concerned about is the, the, the gray. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stay in midtones. And if you see a slide, um, the top slider heads towards the red. So we're going to go this, uh, all the way over. Um, but really, this is a matter of just uh, changing the light brown uh, to the yellow. Okay, we're going to look for the yellow. It's kind of I'm going to go into the shadows option and we're going to do the same thing. I, I'm not going to go all the way over with the red because I don't want it to be too red. So we'll go about a little beyond the midway point, a little bit more in the yellow, uh, some green, and we'll just continue getting the red. And I'm going to click OK. As you can see, in a uh, short period of time, we've managed to convert our pencil drawing into the high definition that I've shown you 
of a uh, red sanguine storm. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a black layer. So I have a black fill over here. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to try and create uh, something that's going to resemble sparkle. So if I take that, this layer here, for instance. Uh, so I'm going to go into the um, color picker and I'm going to try to come up with a beige color that mimics um, what we see on charcoal paper. So I want to go to dark and I want to go to light. Um, it's going to change later on, but um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to select this beige color here and I'm going to go over to the paint buffer tool and it's going to fill this layer completely with that color. The next thing we're going to do is go into filter. We're going to go into filter noise and we're going to go into add noise. Now um, I've already got it in the um, uh, section box here. I have my amount set to 9.51. Uh, anything um, below a around 9 or 10 percent is uh, good for the purposes that we have here. All we really want to do is break up that solid color. So uh, you'll notice also in the distribution box I have uh, dark in effect not uniform and I've also got the monochromatic um, option selected. Now um, this document, this original document is 200 dpi by eight eight and a half by 11. So these numbers here are just about right for the document that we're working on. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have our noise set. But it's it's still for, for um, the purposes of this, I feel it's a little bit too uh, computerized, computer, uh, too sharp. So one final thing we're going to do when we separate this paper, <coughs> excuse me, is to go into the filter and blur. And the next thing we're going to do is go into the Gaussian blur. <coughs> we're going to change our radius to approximately uh, 0.9, 0.81. Any of that is just about right for what we're trying to do. Uh, you can see over here that what it did was it blurred that noise a bit. Click OK. <coughs> so now what we have here is a reasonable facsimile of charcoal paper. I'm going to go back to the layer that's on top of my um, turn that layer back on and we're going to go into the blending mode and we're going to go into normal. Uh, I'm assuming that's it. So let me go back, shut that off, go back to normal and um, now we're in the proper layer and I'm going to select multiply and here we go. We have our drawing of red chalk drawing on charcoal paper. So that's a um, pretty big difference right there from the original pencil sketch from my sketchbook. Uh, but we're going to take it a little bit further than um, what we see here in front of us. So the next thing we're going to do is start picking out some of the highlights. Like I said, this isn't going to be a highly defined uh, drawing. What it's going to be is just um, something that you can put on to give them an idea of the direction and how it is that we're going to be designing and what they're going to look like. So. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, we go back into the color picker. I don't want to go with a purely white chalk. Um, I think that it's, um, it's a little harsh. We'll get something really close to white, but something that's a little bit more muted. So I think this is a good color that we can go with right now. And the next option we're going to go is to um, select brush. So the brush tool is now selected, and we're going to uh, select the brush. Now, the thing about Photoshop is you can have many uh, different brush choices. And uh, what I'm going to select uh, now is a brush that resembles chalk. You can see when I took a cursor over the, that number 36, it says chalk. So I'm going to select uh, that brush. And uh, as 
I was saying before, this is, this comes with Photoshop uh, the full price. So it's nothing here to create, nothing to buy. Uh, it already comes with it. You'll also see that it's set at 36 pixels. Uh, that's a bit small for um, what we're working on now. So I'm going to just uh, increase the size of uh, the brush. Okay, so this is uh, good. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just enlarge this just enough to make it a few bit workable. And um, I want to take the brush and we're going to just start. Oh, uh, before we go any further than this, uh, I want to make sure that our opacity level is set much lower in order to mimic the feel and look of the book um, I want to do a slow build up of the white color so I've got the book now set to about 30 the flow I'm going to leave where it is and the next step is I'm going to create a black layer so we have another layer here and uh, I'm going to uh, change the blending mode to overlay and what you're going to see in this tutorial is when we're um, creating layers that have a lighter color and want to create the effect of, of, of a lighter color, you want to keep your blending mode to overlay. And when you want to um, use darker, more intense colors, you would put your um, blending mode to multiply. So as I was saying, we have the overlay selected, we have our brush, we have our 30% opacity. So now I'm just going to start picking out some areas on the drawing that I want to pop a bit. Um, you can see, I'm not doing color in this drawing, I can do a color, but um, I'm just trying to <coughs> very roughly lay in some highlights so that drawing itself is not really uh, taking any of the details that I might add to it. And you can see as I go over and over with the chalk, it, it kind of makes more effect to that. Like I said, I'm not concerned with staying in the lines. What I'm concerned with is just uh, building form. And uh, right now, like I said, it's... Uh, outside my lines to really uh, add them in and out. But you can see, like I said, this is meant to keep this background uh, even. Don't worry about it too much. If it was something that um, uh, that was glaring wrong with it, all we would need to do is go in and erase it. Let's erase some of that color back, but like I said, I'm trying to uh, not to worry about it too much at the moment. So, um, as you can see, this is the first layer, and um, I began to pop uh, some white. I'm going to create another layer now, and it's basically uh, another layer, um, empty layer, and I'm going to go once again overlay. And I'm not going to change the color of the chalk. What I'm doing is I'm building up another uh, highlight layer. And this time I'm more concerned with um, uh, light and where the light is being affected. And so what I'm going to do is I'm 
figures could be geared towards the front and, uh, and the uh, right-hand side. And uh, like I said, it's pretty symmetrical. So I'm just, um, just trying to leave the viewer's eyes uh, to the parts of the drawing that feel more important for the viewer. So you can see here that I think I'm going to build up some areas much more compact than I have. As I was saying before, the beauty of uh, Photoshop is its ability to create many, many layers and that really gives you a lot of control over uh, your image. Also, gives you control of what image you take. It's um, so easy to just go back and change the image that you have created. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go to dark mode just a little bit. The light has to be just enough. Like I said, what we're trying is to pick out the areas of the drawing that It's uh, uh, already looking pretty uh, big. As I mentioned, it's uh, it's looking very three-dimensional. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit more information. Like I said, this is not supposed to be um, finished illustrations. Uh, it's just meant to show some information of the client. So uh, another thing that's important uh, for this character would be the color of his hair. So um, in keeping with uh, the original idea behind this character that he has red hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another uh, blank layer and I'm going to go back to uh, overlay. So that layer is overlay. And I'm going to select um, preferable uh, red for uh, the character's hair. And once again, I'm selecting some using the same chalk, the same brush. I'm going to just quickly add a little color to the character. As I was saying before, um, we don't want to saturate the drawing with a lot of color. What we're just trying to do is um, get some visual information so that the client has an idea of where you're going with your character. I think that's enough uh, color. Let's see if I can get some idea of what I'm looking at here if I can get that. And um, I'm going to put another piece of information in on this drawing in the background. What I want to do is I, 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 he's looking very white, and I don't want him to look quite so uh, dead, and uh, I want to start overcoloring the drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer, and once again, I'm going to go into um, overlay or blend mode, and I'm just going to put a little blush in on the flesh. So I'm going to um, put in the blush color. Once again, I'm going to stay with the same brush. I'm going to stay with the um, um, the same opacity of approximately 30. And I'm just going to start putting a little bit of color into the brush's cheek, the corner of the nose, of the lips, basically the areas of the figure that would um, warm him up a little bit. So I'm going to add a full-on color, a little bit in the uh, hands, especially in the fingertips, and maybe those are areas where you can see him a little bit 
this color and uh, I'm going to add a little bit of to the flesh but this color just to give it a little bit of life um, one more Uh, I want to work a little bit more on the body. Um, one thing that's the focus on uh, Calvin's Gospel for the characters are, I want the viewer to to focus here just a little bit. Not, I don't want to go overboard with this. So I'm going to create another layer. And um, once more in this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to select a white. And what I want to do is overlay the moon. What I want to do is uh, make his eyes look a little bit more prominent and I'm going to just go to shape here and I'm working on a much smaller detail that will show skin tone and, and so on. And I can see that I'm going to go and go into the white overlay. I'm not making him um, pure white because I found it to be But I did want to uh, to draw a little bit of attention to it, so I'm adding some light. And the next thing I'm going to do is add some color to the eye itself. Um, so let's look at green. And I'm not going to put this on another layer because there's so much, uh, so little information that's going to stay in here. And I'm going to enjoyed this tutorial um, and uh, hope to create another one soon.